Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. So for today's video, we are going to be playing a longer game as I will be having a tournament um, at this upcoming weekend. So let's get started. And I am looking forward to start playing longer games and, you know, getting into playing in the tournament because... Uh, I've, I've been playing Blitz for a while, and I would really get back to over-the-board chess. One of the main reasons I don't do uh, 15 plus 10 games a lot be is because of the the queue. The queue time takes a while. It can take a while, um, say like this. got a game okay so we are playing a 2186 and we have a start with d4 now what do we want to play let's see we are going to be playing d5 I think recently I've been playing uh, somewhat different okay so we're facing the London um, which is completely fine we are going to just play knight to f6. Yep, we are facing the standard London. And I'm going to be playing this line where I... This is probably one of the best lines to counter the London. By far. So, we are... Let's see if our opponent knows the London, the London lines. The accurate move here is knight to d2. If he plays knight to f3, then it goes to a very forcing line. Yeah, and... It seems like our opponent doesn't know um, the typical move, right, correct move order. So we are going to just play queen to b6. This is just a very good line to counter London. And this is also one why I don't play the London. Um, I used to play it for a short amount of time. Um, and I decided to stop because I, I don't see any reason to. So when, when it easily... Easily get countered, and, and a lot of people know this line. See, and now, um, so, we actually have a very interesting line here. As recently, I've seen a lot of people playing this. Um, and coincidentally, I, I faced a game last night, I believe, about this line. And because it's a 15 plus 10 game, I can actually maybe memorize the theory. I analyze... Probably around 12 to 15 moves variation. It's very forcing and it's very fun. Um, so we'll see. So knight to a3. Um, so you could... I use, well, I think the, the first time I, I faced this, I played c4. Which I guess is not really... Um, it's an okay move. But it's not the best move, obviously. I think I, I, I didn't analyze c4 because there's one line that I analyzed, which is queen takes b2. And allowing knight b5, and it leads to a crazy, crazy position. A crazy position. But the thing is, white has to play super accurately. And black has a ton of sacrifice. So I think I am going to queen takes b2. And what I'm going to do is I will try my best to play, to know the theory. So we have knight to b5. Now what we do here is play knight to e4. We're sending a little trap here, you know. Now note that I think I analyzed three lines and two of the lines allowing knight c7 is Pretty much okay for black. Like black will sacrifice the rook on a8, and actually had having a lot of conversation. So a3, sure, it is one of the okay lines to counter because if we go back to this, uh, uh, not a 3 If queen to b3 is played, then we just play c4 and. Either takes a uh, white either takes a pawn, uh, takes a queen, and go into a worse endgame, uh, or 
one second, or go back queen c2, allowing bishop f5, and why why it is much worse. Okay, so we have bishop to g3, which is the the only way to uh, to uh, um, prevent queen takes f2 checkmate. So um, I don't know exactly what we should do here. We are definitely still allowing knight c7, but the thing is, what do we do here? Somehow I'm recalling one of the lines that play um, e5, but I don't know exactly about the move order. So... I mean... Hmm. So c4, knight c7, king d8, which takes. I think c4 is correct, right? c4 has to be correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a. Uh, okay, c4 is correct. But there's a crazy line. So if c4, the thing is the queen is sort of trapped. But the line goes goes like this. I think the line is c4, rook b1. I take the knight, sacrificing a full queen, uh, sacrificing the queen. And white takes the queen with the rook. And I go knight takes c3, forking the queen and the rook. And the, knight is, and the queen doesn't have any way to protect, uh, to protect the rook. So then white has to play somewhere, like queen c2 or queen d2, and then we have knight takes b5, and actually the, in material wise it's equal because um, we, we're trading the queen for a rook, knight, and a pawn. Um, I think c4 is correct here. I think I am going to play c4. So... Knight to c7. This line is definitely very complicated, but I think it is very, very fun to play. Um, it also will help me learn, help me kind of calculate this in long term wise. So now I'm threatening this. Um, we'll see what happens. I thought I, I I don't I think I I was just trying to memorize knight takes c three could be a line, but I think after uh, knight c seven, king d eight, and queen c one, I don't think there's anything. So I think going c four is probably best. Now here rook b one. I didn't analyze why queen e2 is not good, but I think it's simply because of this and this. Um, although there's knight takes c3 after knight takes a8. Oh, oh, there's knight takes d5. Um, if rook b1 and I take on a2, then knight c7, king d8, and knight takes d5, and white wins because the both of these pawn falls. And since the queen is on a2, it no, it, I can no longer capture on c3. Makes sense. So that's why I have to sack. So knight d7, knight c7, king d8. Knight if knight takes e5, now knight c3 works. Because I take because he's forced white white is forced to take. Um because otherwise white just lose a knight. So queen like say knight takes and if knight takes c3, queen takes c3. If king e2, I mean who wants to play king e2? Let's be honest here, right? Um like king e2, I mean, there's queen b2, and then king e1, and then now there's not even e6. I can go e5, threatening bishop b4. It's a ton of things that can happen uh, oh, on on the board. This is probably the mo one of the most challenging lines for in the London system. Knight c7, okay. So we are playing king d8. Knight takes e5, again knight c3. If knight takes a8, then we are going to play 
nice C3, I believe. Um, maybe did I miss something? No, I didn't miss anything because I I'm not allowed to play E5 in the first place. So we can play queen takes c3 here. c3 because this doesn't threaten anything. Queen c1 soft the entire thing. We are c3 check. He plays king to e2. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I was in C three. I mean, I did two takes. Six. Oh, Rook C one. This knight of three check. Oh, oh yeah, the knight of three. Knight of three check. King E two, and then this checkmate. So that's why knight E two is not possible. Okay, we understand that. Uh. Um. We are going to just play... Can we just play king e2 here? Queen b2, I'm sorry. Uh, queen b2 check. And now again, he can't block. Because I, now I just take on d2 and he, and he cannot take the knight. So, we'll see what happens. So now we force king to e1. And we are we going e5 or e6? Okay, now e5 or e6. It's just either. Either one works, but I have to figure out which one. So well, I, it's because I am a little afraid of like the potential of counterplay. Am I playing e6 or e5 here? e5 looks very aggressive, and of course it kind of works. So in my in my head right now, right? If yeah, I play e, say I play e6, and what do, what does white do? White play properly plays bishop e2 as the best option because I am going to turn in bishop b4 checkmate. Um, therefore, so bishop e2, bishop b4 check. Now king f1 is going to be very brutal. Now king f1 and I don't have any counterplay. Huh. Okay. I think I see okay, now now that I see bishop e2, maybe it's not so good anymore. The only, yeah, the problem is that if I play queen c3, king e2 again, and then play e5, there's rook c1 into meso. Uh, which is super annoying, because now after queen b2, there's rook c2 blocking the check now. Oh, wait. But then I, but if that happens, I have knight c3. Well, now there's, um, there's actually knight d2 blocking now. And bishop b4 is rook c2. Hmm, this position is getting very annoying. Uh Oh my god. Wait, do we no wait. Oh bishop e2 we have knight c3 we have knight c3. Right? Also, we playing e5 in order to prevent this. That's That was like kind of the whole point. Um, e5 and bishop e2, we have knight to c3. And the queen can't move. And again, the king cannot castle anymore. So, okay, okay, I think I'm seeing this. Um, I think I am going to play e5. We are going to play e5. 
Again, bishop e2, we have knight to c3. I think e6 is also a good move. Um, but I trust my instinct with going for e5 here. I think that allowing the bishop, some bishop check shenanigans might help. Because again, if he goes knight, bishop e2, knight c3, if he goes, um, queen, uh, rook to b1, I just take the rook. And now, and now I'm just better because the king cannot castle and I, and I can just go back knight to c3 and I'm just substantially better. All right. All right. All right. I think we're playing it right, guys. We are playing it right. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, like, bishop e2 is the only way to prevent bishop b4 checkmate. Because here we have, if rook b1 again, we have a beautiful beautiful checkmate with, or not necessarily checkmate, but we have a beautiful tactic with bishop b4, knight to d2, bishop takes d2, king to e2, and knight to c3, and we are just up too much material at that point. This will give me a lot of fun in in the in um in blitz because if I know this line, then people can't play the London anymore. <laughs> I guess that's why I kind of like d four d five because I will definitely face people who play London. Um, when I play d six against d four, the the pl the advantage is that I I can play I like I don't have to play the boring queen scamming. Queen's Gambit, but the downside is that if I play against the London players, then it gets very annoying. So, all righty. I think we are doing good here. Yeah, and also I think that, you know, if bishop e2, knight c3, queen d2, queen takes, then just bishop back, then I trade. If everything is traded, then now me going e5 is actually good because now I can actually blockade the, the knight. Because this is where this is why you can sack a full rook, because you can get the knight back. However, you do have to go e5 because you go e6, then the bishop is still put, still controlling this diagonal. And then you play e6, and now then sure you the whole line still works, but going to the but now if white solves the problem, then going into the end game, then you're not you, but you're not that much better. So nice e3. And because you you're not going you're not blocking the bishop, the bishop can stay on e6. Right, you can go bishop e6, and if he takes with the only way he can take with the knight, and then takes and takes, and and this knight is not going to be good. So yeah, I think I trust my instinct here. White can still solve the problem, but it's going to take extra steps. And no doubt, because we are up uh, pawns already, anyways. We already, we're already up two pawns, so giving back a pawn is not really a big deal. As long as we get our pieces back in the game and we get enough activity, we should be good. Yeah, now, I mean, what does he do now? The king cannot castle, so he's just gonna kicking himself here for a while. And the rook, this rook is not going out. It's not going anywhere. Um... Because uh, because of getting blocked by the king, the king cannot move to the second rank. I mean, what what is it gonna do now? Yeah, now he has to play rook b one, 
And guess what? I'm I'm just going to take. So a lot of ways win here. But I think Knight takes B1 is the cleanest. Why? Because Knight takes B1, I and then I can play Knight takes uh Knight to C3 again. That that is uh, the that is the whole point. So I am going to play Knight takes B1. And no, if I play when I play Knight takes C3 again, the D5 is protected. So say it takes with a pawn, Knight C3 is again available because it, yeah, it protects D5 and there's no Queen D5 check whatsoever. And he's still pressure to protect the bishop. It's just kind of overloaded. Yep, he's going to do that. And we are going to play Knight C3 again. Again, Bishop B4 doesn't really work because of King F1 simply. I might be able to play it. I might, I could have been able to play it, but I think it's probably fine. So here we have Queen to D2. Right. Do we have Queen B1 or Queen A1 here? So actually, if Queen, I think Queen B1 is better, right? Queen B1, Bishop D1, Bishop B4, King F1. Yeah, now I have 61 and we win. Yeah, because, because Queen B1, we are still protecting on B4, while Queen A1 is not as strong. So we are on. Hmm. Bishop D1 is pretty much force. And then I'm I'm just going Bishop B4 and what is he gonna do? Right? We're going Bishop B4, it's, it's nothing. He goes King F1, we actually don't we don't need to take with a knight because of Queen takes D5 check and there are a lot of things that can happen. Um, although I think, although I think that like if he take just take the pawn, I think I would just win because look, look at where does this king go after f one? He has nowhere to go, and if it goes to f two, e two now the knight takes c three is a whole four against a queen and a rook. So yeah, um, I think we just have a very very nice win. Let's go back, and I am a little bit curious. So computer analysis. Let's see, let's see. Right. Wow. Wow. I play another perfect game? Wow. Oh my god. Wait, that's actually nice. So so all my analyzation I did last night was so good. Yep, so Bishop C4, Knight F6. It's really normal. Um, I in Blitz I will play C5 here right away, and it's it's completely fine. Um, whether you play Knight F6 first or C5 first, uh, but C5 it can be annoying just due to like it might you know might be C4 shenanigans and uh, let's see. I mean there, there might be like some shenanigans happening around um but in 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 the, in the soul of a london players right or it's even knight c3 actually the reason i play knight c6 first is because if i go c5 and knight c3 this goes back into the chobaba london and it is a little bit annoying so i was planning if you know well after knight of six say if he played knight to c3 i will, I will just go uh c6 and completely prevent the threat of knight e5 and kind of play like a slav semi slav game. So yeah, but but this is just a London player. Knight c6. And knight f3 is you know it's, it's okay, but yeah. Knight e3. Um uh give me a second. Let me change this a little bit. So Let's do four and all right. Yeah. Um. 
So, Knight E2 is the more, most correct way to play this because although Knight F3 by engine, it's not wrong. In human's perspective, it's inaccurate. Why? Because the, because the Queen B6 line is very hard to play. Super hard to play. In fact, it's like, yeah, say you play Queen B3 here, right? It's just C4. And if you take here, now Black has a better endgame. And if you go Queen C2, it's Bishop F5, Queen C1, and again, Black is better. Um, and if you, again, you go Queen C2 here, it's a little... Yes, uh, C4 here is yeah, not not correct. So C4 uh, here is okay. I mean, yeah, but yeah, there's G6 and then Bishop F5. Yeah, okay. So I, yep, Bishop Knight BD2, uh, Bishop G7, or you just go Knight H5, eliminating uh, this threat right away. So basically, the whole point of Queen B6 is to force a queen to protect this, and then and. Or you can deal with this uh, London Bishop right away. Just go knight h5. What's he gonna do? Like Bishop f5, e5. You go f6. Right. This is one of the few key, one of the few openings of variations where f6 is actually like really good in order to just remove this because white queen cannot really take this. I mean, what are you gonna do? Like try knight h4. Yeah, see knight h4. You just protect it. You force it back, and then you. And then you take it at some point. Like this bishop is now the target that you are going to to be capturing. So yeah, going back, knight a three is a is I don't know what variation is. I gotta look it up afterwards. Lee Chess is not really telling me. Just telling me it's uh it's in London. Queen takes b two, knight b five, um, bishop f five, but uh I knight e four is best. Again, I think it is just best. Because I analyzed this already, so I know why, but because, I mean, why would you go bishop f5 here, knight? I mean, it's, it is playable, but super annoying. I, I think I didn't see this. I think I was looking at probably, Yeah, I'm looking at probably this game, but yeah, knight e4 is super tricky. Yep, and I play everything correctly. Um, don't the Leech's engine value evaluation is kind of wrong. So, yep, knight c7. Rook b1 is the correct move here. I know that. So yeah, queen takes a2. I I looked at this and I wasn't sure, but if knight takes a8, you have knight. Knight takes c3, but there's knight takes d5. Oh, you just go e6. Okay, so just go e6, and everything's fine. Kick it out. Um, yeah, okay, rook a1, queen b3. And it's fine, because you, now you're not down a rook. <laughs> you know? Um, hmm. But yeah, knight c7 right away, just a mistake. Queen c3. King e2, queen b2 check, king e1. I could have repeated, right? Okay, so e5 is the be the better one. e6 is also good. e6 is also good. But that allows, well, I don't know. Yeah, again, my instance is telling me that e5 is better. It's just more aggressive, allows more things. And yeah, he has to capture his capture here. I mean, but who would do that? So... Yeah, there's bishop here, and you check with the queen, and then you, you gobble the bishop. King f1, queen c4. I mean, queen e2, just capture, capture, and you have a full piece. So knight takes, on takes. What are you doing, you know? Oh, okay, that's not the way to go. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, and I guess you can just, yeah, okay, bishop g4. Just trading our pieces. Uh, D takes E5, then, yeah, and now this knight is dead, too. You're about to be up two pieces, and white doesn't really, and white, what is white doing? You know, it's just, white can grab some pawns in the center, but it looks funny. Rook B1, knight takes B1. See, I know queen takes B1 is good, too. I sound, yeah, it's, I vaguely remember that I analyzed this line uh, last night, so... 
Yeah, and everything is pretty much kind of forced. Oh, Queen A one's better. Okay. Oh, it. Oh, actually, you know why? It actually doesn't matter because my knight's protecting this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It does not matter whatsoever. <laughs> it does not matter. Yeah, and then you get you allowed to take this. So what? Do you take this? Okay, still minus six. Just still completely winning. Queen takes here. You just go bishop here, and this the, this king is way too vulnerable. So that here is resignable. Um, so yeah, this is, um, I think this is a very great demonstration on how to counter the London system. And I don't want to discourage people to not play the London system because in my opinion, I think that the London system is super solid for beginners to play with. Um, especially if you don't repertoire, I think you should take the London system as kind of a beginner uh, open it, opening guy, but I think, but I think you need to know how to counter, how to counter, uh, how to learn like these counter, these counter openings, because the London is very popular. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.